Kushal, are you fully vaccinated? Yes, sir. So you can take off the mask for clarity of expression. The distance is safe. We're practicing because in the final day they might ask us to keep wearing the mask. That is why. Sir. So if you're comfortable like that, otherwise there could be some problems in understanding what you're trying to say. Okay. So speak a bit loud. Sure. Sir. Yes. Kushal, give an introduction of yourself. So my name is Kushal Jain. I come from Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh, from where I, do, I did my schooling. After that, uh, for BE Engineering in Information Science, I went to RVC Bangalore. So from that, I was recruited by Microsoft as SQL Server Core Engineer, mm -hmm. uh, which I pursued for one and a half years. So my hobbies include watching football as well as practicing calligraphy. I have been an active sports player in my college as well as the club levels. Good to hear that, Kushal. Kushal, are you aware about the ongoing crisis in Pakistan? Yes, sir. Can you throw some light on that? Yes, sir. The incumbent government is facing a no confidence motion, sir. Mm. And recently, one of the alliance, alliance party has withdrawn their support. So there are, there are high chances that the government might fall, sir. What is the term guided democracy? Sir, I'm not aware of the exact uh, meaning, sir. If I say apply this term in the context of the Pakistani crisis, does that make any sense to you now? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, it can be the outside influence in the local democracy wherein outside powers influence the government in uh, in the powers. Okay. Kushal, highlight three values that anchor your personality. So the first is a balanced rational approach. So the second would be emotional intelligence. And the third would be innovative solution to a problem, sir. Okay. You know, in several parts of the country, there is acute water crisis. Suppose you are posted in one such part of the country where the terrain is hostile, it is rocky and barren and it also receives less rainfall. How would you resolve the acute water crisis by adopting some innovative technique? Sir, I think in, in such a terrain, sir, underground water storage via natural aquifers will not be very feasible because the terrain is rocky. So, so that seepage will not be very high. So second, since the rainfall is not very high, so uh, we cannot only rely on rainwater. So I think there can be uh, both uh, artificial as well as natural barriers to uh, the rainfall, uh, the rainfall water flow. So the first can be ground uh, rainfall, uh, rainwater harvesting. So the second uh, can be asking for tank water from the neighboring districts. So third can be maintaining an inventory of live water availability so that in cases of crisis, a better coordination can also be done. Sir. Have you heard about water bonds? Yes, sir. What are they? So water bonds essentially mean that uh, based on the water management practices, it can be made remunerative, sir. So uh, funding can, uh, can come via when somebody invests in water harvesting practices, they are set to profit from that. You said your hobbies are playing and watching football and uh, calligraphy. Which football club you admire the most? It's a Chelsea football club, sir. I was talking about the Indian football clubs. So currently, I feel the winners, the Hyderabad FC, so they have had a good season. Okay. Are you following the ISL? So not very actively, sir. Okay. And in the European football clubs, you like the Chelsea football club. Do you know who owns that club? So currently, there is an ownership crisis in that club because the previous owner, Roman Abramovich, was sanctioned by the English government. So now there is a shift of ownership currently happening. Sir. How many... Uh, EPL titles Chelsea hold as we speak now? So, six EPL titles. Okay, the latest one was in? So, 2015-16 seasons. Which football club has the highest number of European titles? 
European titles, Real Madrid, sir. Real Madrid? Yes, sir. Are you sure about it? Yes, sir. Club Milan? No, sir. Champions League, sir. Real Madrid has won 13 titles. European titles. Sorry, sir. Okay. Uh, what is the name of the league which is played in the Netherlands? Sir, I have to look it up. I'm not able to read. Can you highlight some of the football competitions that are held in India? Like one would be Santosh Trophy. Name two more. So one is the I League. Other is the Indian Super League that is happening. And so then there are local tournaments, for example, in Bengal, in Kerala, in Northeast as well. Sir. The Durand Cup. Yes. It relates to which sport? Sir, Durand Cup relates to. Sir, I'm not sure, but I think it is between hockey and tennis. Sir. Durand Cup is related to hockey or tennis. Sir, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Santosh Trophy. How is the structure of this trophy? Sorry, sir, I'm not aware. Sir. How many teams participate in Santosh Trophy? Sorry, sir, I'm not aware. Is it state-wise participation? Or club-wise participation? Sorry, sir, I'm not aware. Okay. Uh, you're also a left-arm orthodox spinner. It's good that you have played a lot of sports. Alec, what is your biggest weakness? Sir, one of the weaknesses could be my sleep schedule, which I'm trying to fix right now, sir. What do you mean? Sir, I'm trying to gradually uh, wake up earlier than I used to every week, sir. Is it not taking a toll on your body? Because you are Yes, sir, I feel it would be relatively healthier if I start waking up earlier. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kushal. Sir. Kushal, what is the meaning of the name Kushal? So it essentially means two things. The first is skilled, when we say in Hindi Kushal Karigar. And sir, the second would be auspicious, when we wish somebody sub Kushal Mangalo. So, Good. Uh, your date of birth happens to be a day which is celebrated the world over with a lot of uh, uh, josh as such. What is the day celebrated as? Sorry sir, I am not aware. Okay. Mm. Are you aware about the World Environment Day? Yes sir. When is that? On around 5th March sir. 5th of March? Okay, uh, 26th of September is your date of birth, right? And that day is celebrated as the uh, World Environment Health Day, right? And 5th of June is the World Environment Day. Can you tell me what is the difference between these two, World Environment Day and the World Environment Health Day? Sir, I'm not aware of the specific difference, sir. So I think World Environment Day relates to uh, awareness about all the environmental changes that is happening around us and measures to mitigate as well as adapt to it. Whereas World Environment Health Day might also mean the impact of these environmental changes on our health. Good. Uh, this is your third attempt or the fourth attempt? Fourth. Your uh, dab says third. DAF 1 is of the is of last time because I think I've misplaced this time's DAF 1. The DAF 2 is this time. Take me through your journey uh, during these uh, four uh, attempts that you had. Sir, I have been fortunate enough to reach the interview stage in every of my attempts, sir. So, uh, so that is very much about my journey. Sir. And how was the performance at... Uh... The interview stage on all three of these occasions, earlier occasions? Sir, in my first attempt, I got 175. In my second attempt, I got 162. And in the uh, latest attempt, I got 180, sir. Hmm. 
you have also played cricket for the KSCA third division league, right? And for how many years did you play that? So while I was in college, and one year after that as well. And uh, you are a left arm orthodox spinner, you said. Now, what do you mean by left arm orthodox spinner? What is the difference between a left arm spinner and left arm orthodox spinner? So previously, left arm spin was only the finger spin that was done via left arm. So this was called left arm orthodox. And later when left arm wrist spin came into picture, it was named as left arm Chinaman. So orthodox essentially means the original form of finger spin. Uh, that is the left arm. Okay, what are the different types of spin? One is finger and the other one is? So there's finger spin, then there is wrist spin. The more difficult one. So personally, for me, I would say uh, uh, finger spin is more difficult because uh, a limited part of the hand is touching the ball, so the gripping becomes more more difficult, and the revolutions per second is even tougher. See between uh, both these forms, which of these forms uses the Pitch for the turn rather than uh, anything else. So I think orthodox spin uh, in left hand and off spin in right hand has a lot more uh, pitches requirement for spins. Okay, and I don't know if you have observed, more shots are played of uh, the wrist spinners. They tend to go for uh, uh, you know more boundaries, and they also tend to take more wickets. Why is it so? So because wrist spin essentially involves flighting the ball. So when we flight the ball, there are more chances of both the things happening. Either the batsman can step out and get quick runs or it might also deceive them and they can get out. Sir. Okay, good. Uh, can you name uh, any other uh, left arm uh, orthodox uh, spinners? Sir, in India we have Ravindra Jadeja. Oh, oh Sir, in Sri Lanka, we had Rangana Herath, who was really good. Sir, in New Zealand, Daniel Vittori was good. And sir, in uh, Indian cricket history also, we had Bishan Singh Bedi, who was a really good left-arm orthodox player. And from the current lot of players in India? Sir, apart from Ravindra Jadeja, Akshar Patel also is actively. Good. Uh, tell me if you are aware of uh, the match in which Jim Lickner took uh, 10 wickets in the innings. Sir, I'm aware of the record, but not the specifics of the match. Okay. Uh, do you remember how many wickets they have taken? That match, in which they had taken all the 10 wickets in the innings. How many wickets had it taken in all in the, the matches as such? Sir, I think 19, but I'm not very sure, sir. You're right, it was 19. My question now is, who had taken the 20th wicket? Sorry, sir, I'm not aware. Uh, are you aware that uh, the person who had taken the 20th wicket also happened to be a left arm orthodox spinner? Uh, one last question. Uh, tell me, what is the impact of the government's uh, program of Atma Nirbhar Bharat? So the impact that we see in many things, starting on economy, we have recently touched 400 billion dollars of export. That shows that Arthur Nirmal Bharat is uh, taking uh, pro uh, progressive steps. So the second is the success of production linked incentive scheme, which incentivizes incremental sales in the uh, economy. So third would be regarding the implementation of technology where Honorable Prime Minister said that technology has to grow by leaps, not by miles. I think that is also happening, which is also aided by the COVID-related lockdown. So I think the fourth is regarding the infrastructure, wherein the recent budget also talk about the Gati Shakti program, which uh, essentially entails a lot more infrastructural expenditure, as well as the quality infrastructure, which will reduce the logistics time that is one of the highest in the country. So I think, sir, on these parameters, Atmanirbhar Bharat seems to be doing well, though there is a lot more improvements that can be done. Sir. Where about the fact, let me ask you, uh, uh, 
a question which relates to this in terms of defense exports what was the target set and what were the achievements till date so defense exports sir i'm not aware of the exact numbers but after the target okay so but after the private uh, after the corporatization of the ordinance factories i think the structure is now being made so that exports can be facilitated do you have any idea about what exactly is the uh, figure of the exports achieved in the defense sector okay thank you kushal 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 you are from jabalpur right yes. kushal uh, jabalpur has a fort named madan mahal fort uh, throw some light on that so madan mahal fort was developed by raja madan shah of the gondwana dynasty sir it also housed rani durgavati when she was the queen of jabalpur so it is one of the smallest forts that is available all around the world and because or it is on an elevated platform so it is also a good watch tower for the city so sir i think uh, now it serves as a famous tourist spot sir. Okay, Jabalpur is located on the bank of Narmada. Yes. Narmada originates in MP. Yes. But uh, the sizable amount of that water is used in Gujarat. Yes. And that is a grudge also uh, somewhere. So, what do you think about that? Uh, should we have some policy in place uh, which talks about the water distribution between various states? Yes, sir. Being the upper riparian state, MP does have its benefits from Narmada. But if in case in future a dispute arises, wherein MP Gujarat and Maharashtra are involved in a dispute, I think the recent, uh, I think the River uh, Water Act under Article two sixty two talks about forming river boards, which can uh, talk about such allocations. Okay, uh, Jabalpur also has. a brief uh, what we say a pride uh, that uh, sugar originated from jabalpur it is said uh, do you know about some, something about that so i am aware of the fact that it originated from uh, jabalpur apart from that i am not aware of any other what is the difference between sugar and billiards sir sir i am not aware of the exact difference uh, your dad says that you worked in microsoft right but uh, that engagement was only for a short duration of some or 14 months why so why you left your job sir i had a great learning experience at microsoft but coming from a family where both my parents are government employees i have seen the ground level impact a civil servant is able to make So based on the clientele base that I was serving at Microsoft, which was very limited, I thought that it is a right time to pursue my career in civil services. You gave four precious or even five precious years of your life in civil services. Uh, you had your chances. Now you should move on for private sector jobs. Yes, I think that can be a thought for the future. but currently because i'm totally devoted to this process sir and i have been motivated by all my previous attempts give me any specific reason why you want to join civil service apart from motivation you received from your parents what else so the first is the ground level impact that a civil servant can have at a policy level sir so the second is regarding the nature of the job that is that provides an intellectually stimulating career all throughout so the third is the nation building process that can be done by many fields and civil services is one of them so fourth would be a stable income and so fifth would be a status that this job also provides status what kind of status it provides so it provides a respectable status in the society in which our opinions matters okay and as far as stability is concerned uh won't it harm inquisitiveness 
So I think it is good, but it should never lead to stagnation, sir. Okay. Uh, in the price section, you have mentioned that uh, at university level, you were recognized for uh, some algorithm yes. on crop yield analysis. Yes. Uh, in stock market, algorithm based trading, what is its current status? Is it allowed or it is banned by SEMI? So I think it is partially allowed, though I'm not aware of the exact specifics about it, sir. What are the cons of it? So it, so the first con is that it takes away the human aspect of trading because then it is based on machine learning and artificial intelligence, which can then benefit people disproportionately, sir. And so the second is a person who's not able to hire or get themselves via this are at a certain disadvantageous positions. Okay. Sociology was your optional. Uh, what is symbolic interactionism in sociology? Sir, so symbolic interactionism is a theory that means that humans interact with them, interact between themselves using symbols and based on these symbols, they make an image out of themselves which is continuously changing as they interact in the society. Sir. Okay. Uh, information and communication uh, engineering you did, we did, right? What is the negative externality of information revolution? Any two? So first, can be the building of echo chambers because of artificial intelligence as a machine now has enough information so that it can provide a user with only the platforms and pages that they want to see. So the second can be a privacy issue because now there is so much information about us on the internet that we have a virtual clone. So sir, it, it has a privacy associated issues. Currently in India, in India, we have a right to be forgotten. No sir, currently we don't have that right. But the data protection uh, bill, which was recommended by BNC Krishna committee, talked about right to be forgotten, but only in a limited sense. Okay. One last question from my side. Uh, you must be aware about uh, Karnataka High Court judgment on HR. What is your take on that? Sir, I think a uniform uh, in school is a welcome step because uh, it then promotes equality as well as it removes any form of discrimination that could have happened because of a particular community wearing a particular uh, type of clothing, sir. So then it essentially means every student is equal and there is no caste, religion or class difference in the schools. Thank you. Kushal, uh, where is your grandfather uh, is living right now? Is alive or no, sir. So, where was he living? Sir, in our village, sir, back. Sir, there is a village called Sridham near Jabalpur. Yes, sir. Okay. So, have you been there in the village? Yes, sir. Okay. What are the challenges that you have seen in your village? So, the first challenge is the transportation because the roads there are not very, these are not all weather roads. So second is there is a dominance of agrarian economy and other businesses are not present. So third is regarding the so girl child education. So that is not very prevalent and uh, a, a strong patriarchy also entails there. Do you, you believe that there are some problems in the grassroots level in the Madhya Pradesh, am I right? Yes. But uh, in, in the indication of your John preference, you have not opted uh, home card. Yes. Why? You would not like to contribute to resolve the problems of your home card, Madhya Pradesh. Yes, sir. I would have wanted to. But, but based on the previous vacancies for insiders in MP, so last five years there have been zero vacancies. So, sir, I think uh, based on that rational choice, I made this call, sir. 
So if uh, if hypothetically if we will uh, think that if there are uh, vacancies, then you will opt for home guard, right? Yes. So it, it is not choice so that you would like to serve any other part of country, but because you don't have to, right? That's why you opt it. No, so this is one of the reasons. But the other being that the nature of challenges in MP is present in most of the parts of the country wherein rural areas are facing challenges in many sectors like health, education as well as transport. So I think sir, because it's an all India service, I will get to serve and improve on it in any part of the country. So you should put uh, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, it's going for the first time. The nature of challenges would be different, but given we are a developing nation, sir, I think challenges are there in any part of the country because there is always a resource crunch than requirements. So, so India is a developing country, but we would not like to represent India abroad because the choice of Indian foreign service is a fifth choice. So my sister already works in Canada, so I wanted to stay back in the country, sir. My sister is working in Canada, yes. So you wanted to stay back in Canada, right? Well, only two brothers, one brother, one sister, two persons. Two brothers as well, sir. Yes. And you are the middle brother. What is what was the uh, optional subject? What problems have you seen in the Madhya Pradesh which you can resolve through administration? Tell me any problems. Problem, what uh, solution problem? So the first problem is the poor social indicators because the IMR, MMR as well as the malnutrition is very high in Madhya Pradesh. So the second challenge is a, so the second challenge is tribal development because 21% of MP's population is tribal as compared to 8% of national. So sir, I think these two problems requires a sociological understanding to help improve and better implement the schemes. See, there are more tribal population in Madhya Pradesh and there are similar tribal population in North However, North Sister State performed very well in schools, if I am not wrong, as compared to Madhya Pradesh. Do you agree on it? Do you agree on it? Yes, sir. In some sports like football, as well as weightlifting and boxing, Northeastern uh, region has an edge over the country, sir. Um, how can you get this learning things from the North Sister State group, which uh, would you like to implement in your state? So the first learning would be active involvement of the leadership because if we see even uh, chief ministers of many northeastern countries are previous football players or head of football associations. So I think sir, that helps in bringing focus back to the sports sector. So the second is regarding the infrastructure at the ground level, district as well as the state level uh, via competitions, funding and... Uh, is there any national scheme to promote the uh, sports? Culture in India? Yes, sir, there is Khelo India program. Is there any university in uh, Madhya Pradesh uh, who looks after the sports related activity, particularly designated for that? Sorry, sir, I am not aware of it. If it is not, uh, should we establish such kind of institution? See, your marks is sufficiently high, 175, 162, 180. So what is the uh, main reason you feel that it, uh, you uh, was not in the list? Sir, I am getting very uh, below average marks in my optional subjects, sir. That is why last time also I missed by one mark, sir, the final list. Optional subject, yes. So all three times you uh, did not have good marks in optional yes. subjects? How many marks? So in my uh, last year one marks in previous attempts. So last year I got two thirty in my optional. Before that two hundred and ten marks. 
cutoff marks from your marks to cutoff marks how many marks difference for one so around 25 to 30 marks sir okay. yes sir okay. so why you are blaming on the optional subject there are essay also there are gs also why you are blaming on optional so because in optional i am trying to be average only but in other subjects i have relatively decent marks sir what about the essay? Last year essay marks. One marks last year. One is the best marks. Not my best, but as compared to top fifty or top hundred ranks, these were the average marks. So it's the average marks. Uh, uh, top fifty or top hundred ranks right. marks. Yes. Good essay. You can get the one fifty marks. So you, yes. you can you can be selected. Am I right? Yes. So you can you <clears throat> not blame only optional subject. It's overall uh, yes improvement. Kushal, one final question before we wind this thing up. If suppose you are at the helm of the district administration and you are posted in the southern part of the country and you have to boost the exports from your district, what will you do? Highlight three steps. So the first would be identification of the potential as well as the specialization of my district so second would be engaging with the msmes of the district and providing them in exposure to the best practices in which they are already in the business so the third would be involving them with the marketing team uh, which can be local coaching uh, centers as well as the government marketing teams so that they have an access to online platforms and they can increase their online visibility so the fourth would be to so the fourth would be to provide them with manpower and collaborating with the Kaushal Vikas Kendras so that they have understanding of the skills that are required to further pursue their businesses. So the fifth would be to provide them with a hotline number to the administration where they can register any of their grievances. So I think these are the steps. Uh, all the steps that you have highlighted, none of them addresses the storage supply chain yes. and all of that yes. how do you manage how uh, how will you manage these things so i think it also depends on the sector that i'm targeting so if it is agriculture so i think the kisan rail initiative with the cold storages if suppose it is manufacturing then so the way you will establish your supply chain from your district or the production centers so the first would be to provide them all weather roads so that easy transportation can happen from the production to the export site. So the second would be regarding the containers both at the storage uh, at the production side as well as the export side that needs to be improved. So third would be maintaining an online inventory so that waiting time for storage is not uh, a lot which deteriorates the product eventually. And so fourth would be to create multimodal logistics centers so that many ways can be achieved to make the product reach the destination. Thank you, Kushal. Your interview is over. We will reconnect with you in some time for a feedback. Let me highlight the good things first. You articulated your arguments very well. Your thoughts were organized. You presented your points in a very rational manner, logical manner. You did not breach the limitations of the constitution. So, in a, uh, all in all, it was a good performance. But uh, this is a critical analysis. So, let me highlight those areas where you need improvement. I don't think there is much uh, of a room for improvement in the communication uh, angle. But the way your mannerisms were, there, there could be some improvement, especially with respect to the body language. First, uh, you have not shaved. Even if you were wearing the mask, you should shave yes. properly. First. Second, the mask that you were wearing was always sliding down and you had to push this up every now and then, which was giving a very uh, informal kind of feeling. Right. So if you're wearing a mask, then wear a tight mask so that which fits you properly. Then the eye contact was not uh, up to the mark. 
when somebody asks you the question, look into that person and then wait for the question to get over. Once the question is done, then you start answering by looking at that person. Majority of the time should be given to the person who has asked you the question, but meanwhile, you distribute the time to other members as well. You were neglecting the members who were sitting at the extremes, right? At occasions, this is what I found. You were not listening to the question very carefully or you were jumping the gun. You started answering very swiftly. Like say, for example, one question where I asked you, which is your favorite football club? You immediately said Chelsea. You did not take, you did not took a moment to understand or process the question, favorite football club, where in India or outside? Similarly, sir asked you a question deliberately, he stopped in the middle of the question. He said that which is more difficult with respect to spin? Did you qualify, did you uh, clarify the question that whether to bowl or to play for right-handed batsman or left-handed batsman? You should have. See, this is not a test of your knowledge, how much you know cricket or football. This is a test of the traits of your personality, the values that you hold, then whether you are inquisitive or not, whether you are a problem solver or not, whether you can uh, resolve conflicts, are you attentive, do you listen to the issues that are presented before you, and then do you form opinions, and are your opinions biased, laced with prejudice, stereotypes, etc., or they are balanced? Do you understand that? This is what is being tested. Whether you are trainable material or not, this is what is being uh, tested here. One thing uh, with respect to the zones, right, where you have not opted for Madhya Pradesh, you have uh, said that you have no, you will not get any cadre there because uh, there is no insider seat, right? Uh, in the last interview, was this question put forward to you? No, sir, this is the first time. Uh -huh. So if this is presented to you, you should also juxtapose it with one line that. I have just exercised my options, but I'm more than willing to serve in any part of the country, in any capacity that the UPSC deems me fit. Right? Always say that, that's, that the same thing has to be uh, said with respect to the order of preferences for different services. Like when sir asked you that uh, why you have not opted for Indian Foreign Service or you have given it a fifth preference, you said that my sister works in Canada. That's why I want to stay in India. Not at all a good answer. And even if it, it is accepted as an answer, then you should have written not opted. You do not have any value system. Do you get that? So just say this, that I have just exercised my uh, preferences to the best of my knowledge about my capabilities, but I am more than willing to serve anywhere, in any capacity. Always say that. Also, once you said the status thing, that it brings status, prestige, your opinions matter. As a civil servant, you have to be the voice for the voiceless. Do you get that? So never use these kind of epithets. Rather, always talk in terms of opportunity, in terms of uh, your uh, arenas where you can work, how you can contribute, how you can further uh, progress, uh, provide progress to the nation, or how you can help in the movement of the vehicle of social justice. Try to talk in these terms. Right? Otherwise, Kushal, it was a nice performance. Before I disclose your marks, is there anything specific you would like to ask? Sir, I think the pace of my answers were very fast. So should I slow it down a little bit? Well, it was appropriate. At times, I, I felt that uh, there was lack of voice modulation in between. And sometimes it was on the territory of informality. Like there was this American linguistic touch to your speech. Like, like it is... The Union Public Service Commission, you were reading it like Union Public Service Commission. It means a kind of dragging effect to the last word. It's more of a Yankee thing, the American thing, right? So try to avoid that. Speak more formally, like we do in uh, formal affairs in India. So that is one thing which I would suggest with respect to the language or the pitch of the voice. And no, sir, apart from that, I think you are a good prospect. And as highlighted, you should not think that it is only sociology which is holding you back. Rather, if you just improve 10, 15 marks everywhere, you will definitely go into the IAS, right? So this time, we have a strong hunch that you are making it. And this is your fourth interview. Yes. Fourth interview and last interview this is what I would uh, say. Right, so go get there and uh, achieve what belongs to you. Okay, so as far as this performance was concerned, the board has awarded you 177, 177. Right, but if you work on these areas and some of the answers which we highlighted, 
which were not so correct. If you could have corrected them, then easily 15, 16 more marks and the mannerisms will add 5, 10 more marks and you are already in the highest zone of interview marks, right? That is it. When is your interview schedule? April. All the best. Yeah. In the last interview, they told you to remove the mask. No, sir. They also asked me to put this. No, sir. And Sujata Mehta, ma'am, was uh, asking us to put two masks, sir. So that is why I'm practicing. And it is this mask only that they give, sir. Yes. This year, I think they are allowed. They will allow without masks because the uh, COVID pandemic is already under control. Thank you, Pushpa. Do you intend to go in the same dress or do you intend to wear the same suit? You would have preferred if you had come in the same dress that you would have uh, probably wanted to take, uh, go for interview as such. You know, because uh, this is the occasion that you are actually putting forth your uh, true self that is going to be there on the show. So, nevertheless, uh, it's a good combination otherwise. I would just uh, ask you to change the socks because there is some print so, on it. Yes. Right? yes right. And go for a, a dark, is it navy blue? Is this sock navy blue? It should be black. Preferably, it should be black without prints. Yes. So the suit will be dark. Fine. So your socks can be either grey or black. Yeah. Prefer a grey uh, that case. Yes. But a darker shade. Darker shade. 